You probably never thought you'd be hearing about fighting cancer by getting injected with a TB vaccine. However, this makes sense because it is only your own immune system that can put cancer into permanent remission, and nothing will provoke a bigger immune response than some of these worst pathogens. Unfortunately, the more unhealthy you are, the more risky this process is, and the more likely an immune response will go wrong and cause unwanted side effects. It is also more likely that your body simply won't produce a reaction at all. This is because you generally run out of T cells as you age, and they can also be damaged by medications like chemotherapy and other safe and effective treatments that you may have taken recently. Thankfully, I can show you how to resolve these issues and turn your body into a cancer-fighting powerhouse. I hope it doesn't sound arrogant when I say that I am the greatest man in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Gentlemen, to the future. Oh, you don't have any glasses. Just pretend. Professor Dal Gleish has shown experimentally not only that his treatment is safe and effective against cancer, and even the common cold by boosting T-cell response, but he has also shown that cancers exert suppression on this part of the immune system. This is important to know because only the immune system can really fight cancer. This treatment for cancer has had tremendous success, but it has not been given FDA approval because Big Pharma runs the FDA. They demand very large trials, but in reality very large sample sizes of hundreds or thousands are really only needed when the effect size is very weak. One could speculate they are required to stifle competition from smaller companies and to keep costs high. If journal reviewers were less biased and if most journals did not get the vast majority of their funding from a few large companies, I suspect there would be much more interest in this treatment. This is a very interesting treatment idea, and it's a shame it's been passed over, but thankfully I don't think we actually really need it. There are now lots of very expensive immunotherapy medications for cancer, but are they effective? Interestingly, they can be incredibly effective, but only if they stimulate pyrogenesis, i.e. only if they cause a fever. Even more interestingly, inducing a fever itself has been used in the past to treat cancer with great success, but again with zero interest or support from the FDA or Big Pharma. And I'll tell you one thing that's very interesting. Uh, some of the people that do really well on CAR-T immunotherapy or some of the immunotherapies, uh, the ones that do best are the ones that develop the high fever. Uh, high fever uh, is often associated with therapeutic success. A long time ago, uh, William Colley uh, used to inject live bacteria into people causing massively high fevers in cancer patients. And he had such a, an incredible cure rate. A fever is actually an immune reaction and causes many physiological effects to occur, especially in the immune system itself. Phagocytes such as macrophages increase their activity, and this is what actually eats the cancer cells. These are the elite warriors of the immune system. Your blood vessels also open up, which can allow for access to areas that might be closed off due to inflammation. This is also true for phototherapy, which causes an immune reaction that selectively strengthens the response of the immune system. Phototherapy has also been used in cancer therapies involving photosensitizers, but since it stimulates the immune system, we can infer it will probably also help with cancer on its own. Unfortunately, there is little interest in promoting therapies that are free or very cheap like this one. Big Pharma is only interested in billion dollar blockbuster treatments, and the NIH takes its marching orders from Big Pharma, and in fact mostly from Fauci. This is why it spends endless money on research that benefits Big Pharma, such as mRNA research, but very little on research that actually benefits us. For these reasons, it is now believed that reducing a fever is a bad idea in most cases, as it slows down the reaction of the immune system. In fact, it is now proven genetically that there was nothing special about the Spanish flu. 
This same flu had an outbreak earlier in the 19th century as well, and there was no problems at all. The real reason for this great death toll in the Spanish flu was most likely due to the ubiquitous use of aspirin to reduce fever of patients. Sometimes with doses as high as 30 grams a day, which can be lethal in its own right. You should also note that in countries like India, which at the time was an imperial property, even higher uses of aspirin were used and even more people died. And someone who's cynical could infer that perhaps some of this was intentional. The reason for these benefits largely boiled down to causing an increased reaction in your T cells. These T cells are created in the thymus from stem cells released from your bone marrow. Without stem cells, they simply cannot be made, and most of the time your body simply doesn't release any stem cells from the stem cell pools, or at least very tiny amounts. Phototherapy can stimulate the release of these stem cells, however the best way to release them is to do some extended fasting for 72 hours or more. This will increase the stem cells available to the thymus by hundreds or even thousands of times what are normally present. And it can't be overstated how important this is. T cells can live in the body for years or even decades once created, but once they respond to an immune threat, they are imprinted in such a manner that they can never respond to another one. This means that as you age, you have fewer and fewer of these so-called naive T cells. And these are the T cells that are able to deal with threats like cancer and pathogens that your body hasn't seen before. And when you simply run out of these as you get older, very bad things are bound to happen. What do I do? We die. T cells are also important to the regulation of autoimmune reactions. Any immune reaction can kill you, especially when you are elderly, because you can accidentally make antibodies against your own body that harm you. This is essentially what an allergic reaction is. The T cells involved in ameliorating these issues are called T reg cells. These are also made in the thymus and must be naive, that is undeployed cells, to have any positive effects. As with all T cells, fasting and phototherapy can stimulate their release. As we age, we tend to lose most of our thymus mass as well, which makes things even worse. Thankfully, the Trimex trials have proven that the thymus can be regenerated by using growth hormone supplementation. What got us started uh, is uh, this observation here that uh, we all have this master gland of the immune system, the thymus gland. Uh, but unfortunately for us, by the time we're 30 or 40 years uh, of age, almost all of the functional mass of the thymus is gone. And that's un unfortunate because we need that thymic functional mass to make T cells that defend us against uh, infectious disease and cancer. And I roughly estimate that after the age of uh, 50, at least a third of us die as a consequence of that involution of the thymus. Next scroll, thank you. So uh, there was evidence that we could actually regrow the thymus. And so we decided to do a clinical trial back in 2015 to 2017. And we found that yes, indeed, we could, based on MRI imaging of uh, functional thymic mass, we could regrow functional thymic mass in people up to the age of 65. And in fact, uh, we could see reappearance of new uh, thymus manufactured cells in the bloodstream and a disappearance of certain senescent uh, T cells, which are making way for the new ones that are coming out. We also saw a sign of reduced inflammation, which we were hoping to see, reduced uh, prostate cancer risk indices, and even changes in hair color in a few of our people. Scroll, please. And with respect to hair color changes and things like that, that sort of suggested a general anti-aging effect. So Steve Horvath ran four different epigenetic aging clocks on our uh, volunteers and showed that in every case, aging seemed to be going in reverse, at least based on the output of those clocks. Later on, Steve went back and had another look at the data based on a completely different metric, which is the plasma measurement that we were just hearing about, the plasma pheno age clock of uh, Morgan Levine, and found the same thing. Next scroll, please. So for that reason, we decided to go on to see if we could replicate those results. So we're calling uh, the new trial the TRIM-X, extension of the original TRIM trial. 
Uh, we're dividing it up into different tranches. The first one is A, which we've uh, completed as of this month. Uh, we don't have all the data in yet, but it's beginning to show some uh, signs of replicating what we saw before. Uh, the age population is about uh, eight years uh, older, uh, but epigenetically they're the same age as the original trim population, so they're a different kind of kettle of fish. We saw a little bit of hair darkening, but not as much as what we saw in the uh, trim trial. But we have seen improvements in prostate cancer risk, uh, a decrease in uh, CRP, uh, and the immune results and the epigenetic aging results will probably be in by the end of this month, but unfortunately don't have them yet. But we do have uh, data in on the plasma pheno age clock. And uh, in the original TRIM trial, about 51% of the people responded positively in that regard, although all of them responded positively in terms of the epigenetic aging aspect. We see the same proportion of responding positively in TRIM X A, so that's encouraging. Next slide, please. So I just had to throw this in. So Steve Horvath uh, volunteered to be a partial treatment control in our uh, group. And uh, he was taking uh, DHA metformin, but not growth hormone. I was taking DHA metformin and growth hormone. His statistical results were not there. My, mine were, don't know if that means anything, but it's interesting. It kind of suggests that we can re reproduce some of the results from the TRIM trial. Next slide. So some new things that we're seeing uh, in TRIM XA, increase in lymphocytes both absolute and uh, percentage that correlates with reversal of plasma pheno age, but we did not see that in controls, only in the treated group. Next slide, please. Uh, we also saw some new things. So we've confirmed that in people that enter the trial with a high uh, carbon dioxide level in their blood, it goes down. That's suggestive of improved lung function. We have made a limited number of uh, measurements on people who have gone through exercise training at our campus. And we've seen uh, a 25% uh, uh, improvement in VO2 max on average uh, with a high statistical significance, again, suggesting improved lung function. Next. Uh, and going along with that, we're finding improvements in muscle strength, uh, both in men and women, as you can see down here. And in exercise tolerance is indicated by the lactate uh, uh, threshold. Improving this gentleman up in the right uh, corner uh, entered the trial at the age of almost 81, and a little, a little while later, he started uh, enrolling in 5K races and started sending us his times. And I think if we started doing linear regression through those times, we'd see that it keeps going down, and he, kept, he says, well, I beat my record, I didn't even try. So we may have some more objective data that come out of these, some of these subjective reports. Next slide, please. Uh, another thing that we saw in addition to the uh, improved exercise capacity, muscle strength, et cetera, is a 14% decrease in the total body fat percentage. But keep in mind there's a lot of side effects with exogenous growth hormone, and we can get this an entirely natural way through fasting. Fasting is shown experimentally to increase the size of organs like the thymus, and the thymus is particularly sensitive to growth hormone. This can reverse thymic involution, which is the main reason that people become more prone to death by cancer and even common pathogens like the flu as we age. Fasting also has many other effects that can help to combat cancer. Even if you are young and healthy, certain medications such as chemo for example can damage your white blood cells, including the T cells. This makes them unable to function properly and damages the CD45 protein, which allow them to identify friend and foe. And if these are damaged, it causes all kinds of chaos within the body. And by chaos, I mean autoimmune disease and cancer. Thankfully, you can address this as well, also by fasting. A 72-hour fast is enough to replace up to one-third of your white blood cells with brand new, healthy immune cells. It also causes self-repair of the remaining cells through autophagy. This is highly desirable as these issues can have extremely serious health consequences. As you can see, there are many natural ways to stimulate this pathway. This is very appealing to me because we seem to be headed for a society of constantly ill people getting daily crackpot injections for every ailment imaginable. Your new society sounds charming. I just can't accept the idea of universal disease. 